Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I, a trained archaeologist, am going to be torturing myself with an episode of the infamous Ancient Aliens TV show from the History Channel. I have seen a couple episodes of this before like in my lifetime and I also do have another video that talks more broadly about ancient aliens and my issues with those kinds of theories which you can watch here or will be in the description box down below if you're interested. The episode that we're going to watch today is Aliens and Ancient Engineers so talking a lot about buildings presumably. Please support my channel with a subscribe and hitting the bell notification okay let's dig in <laughs> lasers with the power to cut through solid stone acoustic chambers that enable interplanetary communication and architecture designed to harness cosmic energy are these dramatic examples of our Peru South America in an area the Inca people once called the Sacred Valley, lie the ruins of the ancient city of Ollantaytambo. But some scholars believe Ollantaytambo was built upon the ruins of a far older city, one whose origins remain unknown. So this is not like entirely incorrect what they're saying here like it's very possible that whatever the city this was like first off i'm not an expert in peruvian archaeology or history like i have heard of pachacuti and i do know like a little bit about that area but uh the kind of something i notice a lot about these tv shows is that they like to ask a lot of questions and they kind of like 70 percent of their argument is like really plausible and then like it's the last 30 that you tend to 30 percent that you tend to have an issue with so and plus i mean it is it makes sense that people build a lot of places on the remnants of what was there before you just have to like look at a lot of the modern day cities that we have you also have to think sometimes about the fact that when we come to choose places where we're going to build cities or settlements there's a limited amount of places where it makes sense to do so you don't just like pick somewhere in the middle of nowhere you got to pick somewhere that's got good access to water if you're looking for something like a city it's probably going to be somewhere like on a trade route or like a convergence of a several routes where people come and meet and gather together and so it's highly likely that places that are ideal spots for cities will have been used by predecessors of different civilizations. So they're talking about this like the 1400s. Yeah, certainly there were advanced civilizations in South America before the Inca. Uh. The gate behind me is called the Gateway of the Gods and it was built several- Notice how this guy is just an author and he's not a doctor. <laughs> he doesn't have a doctorate or anything to his name. He's not a professor at teaching at a university. He's just an author of a book. So that's kind of the level of the experts they tend to use on these TV shows, just saying. 12,000 years before the Inca arrived here. I mean, you gotta think about these sometimes in like the wider context of things. He's saying that that gate behind him was built like a thousand years before the Inca. Yeah, the pyramids were built a couple th thousand years before that as well. <laughs> so this implication that like the older back in history, like the stupider people are, or like the less innovative and, and capable of technology they are is incorrect. We call the Oran Pacha. We give them that name because we have no idea who they were, where they came from, or where they went the case for a lot of ancient civilizations especially ones where we don't have historical records of their writing there's the famous harappan culture in india we don't know what happened to them um so this whole idea that it's a really big mystery of where several civilizations like evolve and then collapse and we don't really know much about them is prevalent across across the board because we don't necessarily have records of their writing if they did have writing <laughs> The Iraq people are as it's interesting that they're showing this because this actually looks a lot like cuneiform, not like any of the writing that I know of in southern Peru. Constructed aqueducts and irrigation systems that still function today. 
uh, the Romans managed to do that, and we're not saying that any of their stuff was handed to them by aliens, as far as I know. In modern day, if we were going to move a 50-ton boulder, we would have to assemble a special transportation unit consisting of steel girders, several axles, uh, hydraulic jacks. Yes because we have the advantage of having those kinds of technologies and they would have used different technologies to probably assemble something very similar. They just wouldn't have had a giant machine to do stuff for them. They would have had to use other engineering methods. Several different options, none of which would be available to the people who live way back then. I like how this guy is saying that and he's like the co-owner of a construction yard. So how does he know that they weren't capable of doing that? As it fused together, by an unknown form of energy. It's almost as if two stones were leaned together and they infused it with some type of high radiation beam or a laser. What? Within, there's no explanation for how they had the ability to create such a high heat source and fuse these rocks in such an intricate fashion. Because they didn't do that? It feels as smooth as a bathroom mirror, which means oh, some God, type a of a vitrification process. This is the guy with the hair. Oh, yeah, this guy is hilarious. I saw a really great meme once of him just like his how his hair got like longer and longer and longer when they filmed this show. And it's just like the caption of it was like slowly being abducted by aliens. <laughs> what you can't explain is the moving of 50 ton stones up the sheer face of a cliff to create the walls of the fortress. I mean, I think one of the reasons that we, at this moment in time, can't explain this is that it's never really been tried or practiced because it's not something that a lot of people want to give us funding to try and do. Experimental archaeology is how a lot of the time we figure out how these things are done. It's solidly demonstrated throughout the entirety of human history that we have found ways to move lots of big boulders and rocks into some very interesting places without needing modern machinery. That, in and of itself, requires- Oh my god, it's the first person with a PhD. But, uh, I wonder what his PhD is in. So let's just take a, a little, a little look-see. Okay, so his PhD is in medieval literature. It's not in archaeology, it's not in science, it's not in engineering. So he doesn't actually have a degree in anything actually relevant to what he's talking about. When you enter this Fair city, enough. you're immediately struck by sort of that modern. So this guy does seem like an illegit archaeologist from Wikipedia and what I could find on there. So let's see if he actually talks about aliens in his clips. This layout of this city, you have a street of the dead that goes for miles, along which you have all of the major ceremonial architecture including some of the largest buildings ever erected in the New World. The city's layout strangely resembles a computer circuit board. Oh my god, this is just what? And remarkable similarities to the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Oh, I hate when people make the connections between the pyramids in Egypt and the pyramids in the New World because they're not related at all except for their rough geometric outlook. Like one is straight-sided, the other is stepped. One is for burials, the other one is a temple and for rituals. When we look at these buildings, we find the same mathematics incorporated into them than what we find in the Great Pyramid and the surrounding pyramids of the Giza Plateau. Yeah because mathematics aren't limited to just one civilization and one people. They are something that are fully capable of being realized and, um, and used by people independently of each other. That just because one used it doesn't mean that it comes from the other. I wonder some ways if some of this is like a bit of a root in like racism and colonialism. Ancient Egypt tries to get presented, has been presented for a very long time as being very like westernized and kind of like whitewashed so to speak because they are clearly so advanced a lot of colonialists wanted to take ownership of that and then when you come to the new world and the thought that they were just like barbarians because they didn't have the same kind of advancements that we did yet there's this whole idea that they couldn't have come up with this stuff on their own which as i said is just like racist and colonialist also like teotihuacan 7th century bce the pyramids at Giza, a couple thousand years before that, like that's a lot of time. If they were given 
all of this info by the aliens like why wasn't it all at the same time why are they so literally thousands of years apart do they just keep coming back and the temple of quetzalcoatl are in the same layout as orion's belt which is basically the formation which the three pyramids of the Giza Plateau have been laid out into as well. Okay, even if that was all on purpose, like, again, these people are all looking at the same sky. They can see the same things, so it's not entirely out of the picture that they would use that as their their plans. It's thought by some that the Great Pyramid itself was a massive microwave generators Whoa. literally sending a, a beam up to a satellite or, or or powering some other kind of spacecraft or installation but the thing is it's power what what is it providing power to so they're saying it's like shooting it up into a spaceship like i think if you talk to like any engineer or like astrophysicist or somebody who works like that's not how energy works that's like that's not that's that's just not how it works and also like where is the proof that this is what it did like the great pyramid is a tomb we know that there are records that it is a tomb for khufu not a microwave vijayanagara would have been one of many cities around the planet built by the extraterrestrial gods it was part of a network of ancient cities around the planet in India and in Egypt and Africa and other areas of the Middle East was one of their special cities that they had built thousands of years ago. Well, no, because they just said that it was, uh, I just like, here's the thing is that he's talking about all these different cities and all of these different cities that he's probably talking about were all in use at different periods in time. They weren't all in use exactly at the same time at one point in history. So I don't really understand how it's a really great network if it wasn't all being used at the same time and if they're not all contemporary. Along the east bank of the Nile River lie the archaeological remains of the vast Karnak Temple complex. I've been there. Karnak represents the combined achievement of many generations of Egypt's... This is the hypostyle hall in Karnak, which I've actually been in. And like these columns, they don't really show up very well here because there's no people in this shot, but they are massive. Like you can't like, it would take like four or five of me to wrap my arms around all of them at the same time. It's kind of crazy. The obelisk is carved with the same inscriptions on four sides and they're all exactly the same. And they're beautifully cut and articulated hieroglyphs into this red granite stone. That's because it's called craftsmanship. Something like this kind of an obelisk is, is like is a holy object. It is being commissioned by a pharaoh. This isn't like something that's been commissioned by like a vizier or a high-ranking noble. This is by someone who is the living representation of a god to the ancient Egyptians. They're, they're not going to do like an okay job at, the, at it. These are things that would have been planned in advance. Like they would have drawn out already what they were going to do and practice what they were going to do several times, not to mention that the people that would have been doing this would have been people at the top of their game and not like the apprentices. So it makes sense that yes, it's done very well because the best of the best would have been making it. We would look at it today and say it had to be some sort of machine that carved these things out. N no, it's, it's 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 tools especially like for stuff that's happening at karnak so like karnak temple and that site has been used for a very long time but it came into prominence during the new kingdom in, in egypt which is when they would have had metal tools like bronze and everything to be able to carve this stone this isn't like we're talking like they're trying to make this in in the stone age and they would have already had a couple millennia to kind of practice carving into stone and to perfect it because obviously this isn't the first time they've done it. The toolkit that we see that the ancient Egyptians are supposed to use, there's no way that... Okay, so they have a toolkit, they have evidence of what they used, and now they're just going to say, well, oh, it, it's not good enough. Have you tried? Have you tried to use it? Or are you just being a bit of a snob and saying, oh, well, you definitely couldn't have done this without a drill. There's no way. Have you actually tried? This is what I'd like to know. The apparent precision used in the construction of the obelisks at Karnak suggests a 21st century level of expertise. No, it doesn't. <laughs> 
This is one of my big bugbears, and I said this in my other video as well, is that we have this really elitist view that people in antiquity were stupid because they wouldn't be able to use a smartphone or they like didn't invent smartphones with their technology at that time, which just kind of like completely disregards the entire history of advancement in technology of humanity and the fact that you know they had to do these kinds of things for us to get where we are today. It's not just something that happens overnight. You I wonder how this was even done with allegedly primitive tool. What is your definition of primitive though? Like it because it's not being done with like an electric drill that is everything other than that primitive. Like by that standard, we still use very primitive tools today for a lot of things. And like, you know, are, are stone tools primitive or are, but then metal ones aren't, but then in this context they are like, it just like, that doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Because today, we could only do this with machines. Not we could only do this. We would only do this with machines because it doesn't make sense when we have that capability nowadays to do it by hand. It's like time and labor wise, cost, money, etc. It just doesn't really make sense. But there are also people like artists and sculptors who do do things by hand nowadays. Like just because we wouldn't do it by hand nowadays doesn't mean that if we that we couldn't if we had someone who was properly trained and familiar with the techniques like it would take a, quite a while to learn how to do things to this scale. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't do it if we really wanted to. And compare the left to the right. We flip it over and bring it over the original. And as we can see, we have a perfect match. Yeah. Because again, they don't just like, they don't freehand this stuff, guys. They use like architectural and engineering and math tech, mathematical techniques to figure this out and to plan out what their sculpture is going to be. By comparing an example of ancient sculpture, with one made by more modern methods. I like how they use machine and we they're not so so they're gonna compare it with something that's made by modern methods, but they're not going to compare it or look for somebody who you who makes stuff like this using ancient methods but in modern day so that they could actually show them how it's done. They're gonna like, oh I have to use a machine. The ancients were using this profound sound technology in order to put themselves into a deep state of you you mean an echo, using an echo. And mathematical precision that rivals anything possible in the modern age. Oh, because we're the only ones who are capable of doing that with our computers. <laughs> okay, I wonder if that was as painful for you to watch as it was for me. A couple things that I just want to remark upon uh, before I sign off for today. I find it really interesting that, like I said, a lot of this this stuff like th this video is very I think manipulative in the way that they edit things so they spend a lot of time talking about stuff and being like how did they do this or they ask a lot of questions and then they kind of try to fill the blank with aliens but they don't really do a very good job of explaining like where all the evidence for this stuff has gone like where is this technology where the text writing about it where are uh, the, the tools or the remnants of these things that they allegedly gave us to build and do some of this stuff. And also I found it really interesting that like the two like archeologist consultant people that I spotted that were actually archeologists when I Googled them are just people that are edited into the program to explain historical sites, but then they just never appear again which is really interesting. So they're using the archeologists in this program to try and give things credibility when the archeologists aren't the ones that are actually saying these are ancient aliens that are doing this stuff or that are creating these things. The quote unquote experts that they're using to kind of verify this stuff are not actual like accredited experts in these fields or in these sites, in these civilizations. Like if you did a little bit of research, if you maybe did a little bit of experimental archeology, span well, you would come up with a different answer for it. I just think that this is like really, I don't know, rude <laughs> in how it looks at ancient people. And it kind of says, well, you couldn't 
have done this because if we just went and tried to do it today, like we wouldn't be able to do it, not recognizing the fact that we're incredibly spoiled by all of our technology and the fact that we haven't had to learn to do, that we don't have to do things that way anymore. There's also like not really a connection. Like they really jump all over the place. They're going from Peru to Mexico, to Egypt, to India, to Malta. Like all the sites that they're talking about happen and were prominent at different points in time, but they're trying to connect them together. Like they're, they all happened at the same time. So this is kind of like the biggest thing for me is if we had aliens and they were coming to give us like ancient technology or something like why didn't they give it to everybody at the same time like wouldn't that be the most efficient way to do it why would they only give it to these people and then to these people and then to these people are they just making like return trips not to mention that like none of the scientific things about like the pyramids being a microwave or like an energy source of power makes like any sense whatsoever and again with Teotihuacan their like proposal that it's like a computer board they don't go anywhere with that. They just make that connection, but they don't explain anything about what the computer board might have been powering at all. So when you actually look at this stuff with like critical thinking, you can just see that it's really been edited together creatively to kind of take advantage and to try and present stuff like they're plausible. But there's obviously because it's made by specific people with a, a specific agenda in mind to perpetuate these ideas they're not going to tolerate somebody kind of rebuttaling it and and like i said they very clearly built it and and created the show to try and make it seem as credible as possible i think the the archaeological sites that they featured on this television show were, were very interesting sites like i have been to karnak i've been to luxor i've been to the pyramids of giza and i would love one day to do to go to teotihuacan i actually wrote a paper on it when i was studying archaeology at my undergrad but it just makes me really angry to suggest that we weren't capable of doing any of this stuff ourselves, and that it must have been something given to us by other people or aliens from above. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was at least mildly entertaining for you to watch me roll my eyes so hard. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments uh, section down below. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos from me, kind of like reaction stuff, watching all this bogus ancient alien stuff on the internet, I'd be happy to oblige. These videos are pretty easy for me to make, so let me know. If you'd like to follow me on any of my other social media, that's also in the description box. I've got Instagram and Twitter. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you get notified whenever I put out new videos. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys thought of this <laughs> particular video. So uh, I look forward to reading all the comments on this one. So please leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!